Hey guys, I'm the Wolf Demon Gar Blue Moon, and welcome to the Cursed Forest. So this is still in beta. I was kind of hoping that it would be out already, but I have yet to play the Cursed Forest, and I also never got to play the original one that was made as like a demo with the the CryEngine. This is still made with the CryEngine, but I've heard that they made many different changes. But I thought I'd give it a go, especially because we're in the Halloween mood. I've heard that Section Four is super buggy, but like I said, never played this before, so might as well just start with section one. I heard uh, Wade and Patrick both played um, the original one, and they said it was really good. So I'm kind of curious to see how they kind of improved upon, you know, just the game in general. From going from the demo to a full release game. Hmm... I love hearing the sound of creepy laughter. Oh, hi, Jesus! I think my eyes are like popping out of my head from where they should be. I have like snail eyes. <laughs> where? Th oh. This actually looks pretty good. Let's take a look around. Oh. The old dancing tree right in front of us, though. Hello. Hi. There's a bee in my ear. Nice little campfire. Now, I have, like, the volume at full blast right now. So, I am probably going to get a... Uh, they're probably gonna get, get a good scream out of me if I get jump scared. <laughs> Honestly, surprised how somber this intro is. It looks gorgeous. I wish there were more. Hi. I wish there were more games that ran on the CryEngine, except you know, Sonic Boo. <laughs> that was a mess. Fu's. Oh God, Alter's Mystery. Ever since I started researching and writing about the abandoned pla um, places, there's always been one in particular that I've always wanted to visit. I've heard many stories about the place, everything from cars mysteriously breaking down as they try to pass through, the travelers venturing into the forest, never to be seen again. Well then, then there's the tale of the, of the settlement itself. The people that lived there were building a railroad until one day, they all disappeared without a trace. The incident was, was almost had almost been forgotten now, discarded as an urban legend, a ghost story to keep children from staying too far into the woods. Now I have the opportunity to finally visit the area, and who knows, maybe I'll even solve the mystery of what happened there. When I first encountered the settlement, or entered the settlement, I couldn't believe how many things had been left behind. Whole homes abandoned with the, their families belonging is still inside. I find it hard to believe that these people would just have left all their worldly possessions of their own free will. I feel as if every step I, I take leads me closer to discovering the truth. Still, no matter how exciting I find my discoveries, I feel uneasy in this place, as if I'm being watched. On the outskirts of the settlement territory, I have made an incredible find, a set of altars. They look older than anything I've in the village, as though they would have been here for a long time before the settlers were. Out of curiosity, I lit one of them, and as I did, the ground began to shake, almost as though there had been a small earthquake. I am sure it has it was nothing but a coincidence, but still, standing in the light of the altar, I felt relief, as if I were safe from the terrible presence that had been following me. I think the altars could be an important clue as to what happened here all those years ago. I will have to do more research tomorrow. Okay, cool. So, light the altar. Ah! That's how we save here. Cool. This is gonna be an earthquake. Oh, goody! It's getting really dark. Oh, it's like that, like, haze in, um... Like, when you're in a really creepy area of World of Warcraft. Oh, this is good. Fuck. I'm gonna fall, aren't I? <laughs> oh! Okay, nope. We're good, we're good. I actually like how I can see my legs. I'm not trying to run, but I'm running regardless. 
Oh, I can actually crouch? Hi. I have like the most drunken head bob. In very out of place footsteps. I take very l large and then s very quick steps. Oh fuck. I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to see what's over here. Hello? Not good sounds. Definitely not good sounds. Can I even make it over this ridge? Okay, cool. Oh, uh, campfire. Well, I guess I could have just walked, but I was actually kind of curious how I stumbled upon a secret. Well, what's in here? Nice little cabin on the edge of the woods. Hello? Okay, cool. Carrot. I got a carrot! Uh. So, what do I do about that? Delicacy, but not for you. Okay. Well. Could you tell me why I have a carrot? Suspicions. There was a strange atmosphere in the settlement today. Why are your notes just everywhere? The people seemed more subdued and silent than usual. Although, it could have been a projection of their, of my own foreboding. Sarah's predicament plays on my mind, so much so that out of the corner of my eye I could swear I saw her sitting in my room. But when I looked, of course, she was not there. I will need to approach her father about his attitude towards her. He is a harsh leader and has no different in his parenting. While the villagers seem enraptured by his vision, I am less convinced and find it hard to trust his word as certainly as the others. Although the streets were quiet today, in the night they seemed to have come alive. When I left my house to inquire as the commotion of the noise faded into nothingness, as though it had never existed in the first place. Tomorrow I will have the have to be braver and speak to Sarah's father, then perhaps the feeling of unease will leave me and the inexplicable things that may have happened here will show themselves to be nothing but a fracture of my own nervous mind. Ian, 13-10-1967. Well, this was quite a while ago. So... <gasps> oh, Jesus, hi! Well, there's a poltergeist here, that's for sure. Cool. <gasps> the fuck was that? I saw that! So like a shadow right along this road. I don't even think I should be going this way, but I am. Hi. Ooh. Oh, it's not a good sound! I can't even think of an animal that makes that sound. This, uh, I would prefer a crickets over. Oh god. What did I find? What did I find? Fluffy friend. My father never liked my frequent trips into the forest. As a deterrence, he used to tell me tales of feral wolves that roamed through the trees, hunting in packs and ripping apart any animal or human they encountered. To this day, I believe that the wolves were nothing more than stories told by an overbearing parent because I never saw, heard, or sensed their presence. I think that's because the forest has always been a beautiful and peaceful place to me, exactly the way I imagined it from my books. Not the dangerous place I was told existed beyond the tree line. 
Every step I take deeper into the forest highlights its beauty. The sweet-smelling flowers, the harmony of singing birds, the squirrels that jump skittishly from one tree to another, and even the insects that find their haven amongst the varied plants. One particularly sunny day, I was walking into the forest when I heard a noise from the bushes. It was not the rustling of the wind. Uh... Oh, sorry, of wind on leaves, but of something lurking in the undergrowth. Oh, so it's probably what I heard. My mind, though normally calm amongst the trees, immediately jumped up to thoughts of wolves waiting to pounce. I took a cautious step back as that I had suddenly seen a chance to escape. A rabbit jumped from the underbush and bolted from its hole. The next day, I returned with a carrot for the rabbit and placed it in front of his home. Oh, so that's why I have the carrots. <laughs> Within three minutes, it reappeared, sniffing the food cautiously and allowing me to get a better look at it. Its coat was a shiny, silverly gray, and around its right eye was a perfectly circular patch of black fur. Within two weeks, it was eating out of my hand. The rabbit's bravery was short-lived. Ah, and comfort of the presence of humans made it an easy target for the settlement hunters. Sometimes I think animals deserve more sympathy than humans. Ah, that's so sad. Well, well, there's bones in front of this. Oh! Oh! I think I did a bad! I think I did a bad! Well then, yeah, yeah, fuck that, <laughs> fuck everything about that, fucking invisible creature with glowing eyes, no, no, hope you enjoyed the carrots, oh god, I'd rather not, oh! Well then, apparently the Huntress is out here too. Holy fuck. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Okay. So, I guess this is just a map of the area. There was the rabbit. There was the moose. I didn't I recall seeing a moose. This is where I am. There's a fishy fish. I don't. I really don't want to see the fishy fish, but I might as well say hi. Fuck. I just want to go. I just want to go. I don't know how I missed the moose. Is this glowing? Oh, it's a safe spot. Okay. Hello. Oh. A Riberty Rabbit. Well, Riberty Rabbit. Because it's a frog. God, my ear holes stop. My ear holes stop. Okay. Monster in the light. Oh, shit. When I was younger, an older boy told me a story about a creature that lived in the lake. He swore that when he had been out walking, he, he had looked towards the distant shoreline and saw red glowing softly radiating from within the water. He took off his shoes and waiting towards it to get a better view. But as he got closer, it started moving rapidly towards him. Startled, he backed out of the water to safely get back on land. Emerging from the spot he had just left, he caught a glimpse of bright red scales, a shark-like jaw, and rows of jagged, oh, ragged, sharp teeth. Okay. After he had recounted his tale, I told the boy I didn't believe him, that nothing so monstrous could be in creation. In response, he took out a bag of old books, flipping through... A well-thumbed page that showed a hand-drawn picture of the grotesque-looking catfish. It was not the creature he had seen, but proof that nature could be more 
hideous than anything I'd ever imagined before. I went home in tears, and my father berated me for believing in foolish make-believe stories, even now, although I know it cannot be true. Some part of me believes in such creature it exists, perhaps hiding in a cave deep below the water surface. Sometimes it haunts my dreams. In them, I am the boy swimming out of the lake. I saw beneath me coming up towards me, and I am powerless to move. When it grabs my leg and its jaw it drags me into the depths, I feel no pain. Only the sense of relief that comes when succumbing to the inevitable. It's strange. You think that I would stay away from the lake, but more than ever, I find myself drawn there. Hope they catch a glimpse of the mysterious creature from my nightmares. Oh, well then. Hi, Froggy Frog. All the Froggy Frogs. So. Oh. I'm just automatically bouncing through the water. I think that's a bug. I really don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. What's this? Oh man, what is this? Paleontologist! Oh god, I saw it. Well, am I going to struggle here? Because I'd rather not. I'd rather go back to shore right now. Friend. <gasps> oh! What? Oh, oh! Okay! Um. I'm kind of getting dragged. Oh shit! Nope! Fuck! Ow! Oh fuck, where am I? Where the fuck am I? <coughs> okay. Oh goody, I got I unlocked the achievement called bait. Oh cool. I'm glad we had that happen to us. What's with the ruins? You know, I'm cut. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm kind of interested to see this moose thing that we apparently missed. Hello? Moose! How you doing, friend? Oh, God. Oh, God, stop. Oh, I regret this. I regret this already. <laughs> Oh god. Hello? Fuck. Oh, I see something up ahead. Moose, is that you? Oh fuck, it was. Okay, there's definitely a path this way. Oh, I really don't want to say hi to the moose, but... Fuck. Oh, of course there's a cave that way. It's over here. Is there an altar over here I can save at? No. Do you like the exploration route that this game has taken so far? Oh, yep, an altar is right here. Interesting. I'm also curious if there's like anything that I actually ran into that could have killed me thus far. Oh! Oh fuck! Oh Jesus Christ! Oh. Well, these <laughs> the devs behind this game are definitely great when it comes to jump scares. Is that you laughing at me? Don't. Yeah, you're fucking laughing at me, throwing rocks and shit. Okay. 
Moose. Are you around here? As far as I know, this is the only other place to go, unless I had to swim through the water. Hi. Another note. Another safe spot, too. Smuggler Cave Secrets. Jan told me that there's a cave hidden in the forest where many years ago thieves from the city hid precious contraband. When they were caught, the, um, the cave was searched and the valuable items were confiscated and removed. As I knew a few interesting stories from this area, I pestered Jan for every detail he knew. We searched the cave for weeks, with only a vague idea to, as to its location. Eventually, on one of many rambles in the forest, I found it, exactly as it had been described, the boulders flanking either side of the entrance, the hanging ivy partially obscuring the hole in the rock face, the fallen log perched precariously above it. I wanted to go inside, but the daylight only penetrated a few feet into the depths. Or into its depths. I'd had the logical thought that maybe something precious had been left behind in there. Jewels that had fallen to the cracks in the floors had gone unnoticed. Money that had been hidden extra securely amongst the stalagmites and not had been found. Gold pieces buried under a, a thin layer of dirt in the floor. You have a very interesting imagination, friendo. Anyway, Jan convinced me not to go in. The ground was slippery and uneven, and without a light to guide our way, we could have got lost in the branching tunnel. I never have returned to explore. I think that's for the best. Oh, goody. So I'm guessing that's where we're going next. <laughs> if I have entered the cave, it would have been empty. Only filled with my disappointments. Since I never went back, in my mind it remains an untouched cavern filled with riches. A room of lost glittering treasure. A precious memory. You guys have a very good alliteration in this forest, I gotta say. All right, I'm probably gonna play until I get to the next save state, and then I'm probably gonna stop. But if you guys want me to keep playing this, I have no objection. Besides me getting the balls scared off of me, always a fun thing to happen, I guess. Is this? Yeah, this circus is it's like a like an old path up there, but it's completely broken down. So, oh god, damn it! Well, the dark creature is out here in full force. Some kind of demon, I guess. Oh god, what now? Why is my heartbeat going up? Okay. I am not a fan of he heights! Oh shit! Fuck. Oh, caves are here. Okay, cool. Don't do that in my ear, please. I hate it when you do that in my ear. Oh, man. No. So, did I piss off the guardian of the woods here? Oh goody, the somber music, how I've missed you. So what is in that cave? Oh, you can actually zoom in. What the hell is that? I don't know if I could have actually gotten it or not. The jump does not seem that high. Oh. Apparently I'm gonna get it after all. Okay. Cool. Now what the fuck is this? Oh, an arm. Hi. I see something glowing down there. I did for a second. So, about that, I'm just gonna go. For some reason, you don't stop sprinting after you hit shift. 
Fuck. Gonna throw another rock at me, you piece of shit. Okay. Well, guys, I think that's where I'm gonna go ahead and take a break. <laughs> Before I scream at the top of my lungs and wake up my entire household. But thank you guys for watching <laughs> The Curse Forest. Let me know if you guys want me to play any more of this. But so far, I'm really enjoying this. I love the atmosphere. I love the environment. And they, they did a great job with, like, all the mini hues. It really meshes well together. And I, so far, I really like the creepiness of the creatures. But th thank you for <laughs> watching. Let me know what you think so far in the comments. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs> Let me in! Let me in! <laughs> <laughs>